Hey guys, thanks for checking the video out. I want to go through like a full mix here, but I've been lucky enough to have been given the plugin alliance, like the full XXXL, whatever it is, all the plugins. Um, and I want to kind of open them, open most of them for the first time with you. I've not really taken a look at these in too much detail. Uh, and I've kind of shortlisted a few that I think I'm probably going to use. I want to go back to a mix that I've not seen in a long time, probably since I mixed it the first time round maybe like 10 years ago, something like that. It's going to be a little bit of a mixed salvage because it wasn't recorded that well, I have to say. Um, but I just want to go through everything and a full walkthrough, fully plugging Alliance. I'm not using anything else on the mix other than Sonarworks, but that's just me in the room. Um, let's just jump in. Let's just see what we've got and see what's going on. I'm not going to edit anything. What you see is exactly what's going to happen right now. Let's just jump in. Okay, so here's the mix. We've got drums, we've got kick, snare, rack, floor, blah, blah, blah. We've got bass. I've created some buses that I think I'm probably going to use. We've got guitars. These are all DIs, so there's nothing amps here at all. It's all going to be completely DI'd. Um, we've got some buses there for guitars, and then we've got some vocals with some harmonies and all that kind of stuff. So first of all, let's take a look at what plugins we're actually going to use. So I've created a little folder um, called Plugin Alliance. And we've got the AMEC EQ250, so really good mastering EQ. Um, I have used this before and I loved it. I thought it was great as the mono version there, um, but the stereo version is probably what I'm going to use in the master bus. Then we've got uh, Blackbox Analog Design HG2. Now, spoke to Dom Sigalus about this. Um, you've probably seen his channel before. And he was saying about how much he loved the plugin and how much he loves, loves, loves the hardware. Um, I've never used it, never really used these kind of one box, just tone box things. Um, but I'm going to see how it sounds. It might be great. It might not do too much for my mix at all. Uh, then we've got um, the BX Console N. So this is the Neve console channel and all the stuff that comes with that. And then we've got the uh, the SSL, so the 4000E. I like the 4000E. It's cool. I have used this before. This is quite a utility thing for me. I love this on drums. I love everything that goes along with it. Then after that, we've got the Delay 2500. You've probably seen that before, like the Delay plugin. Um, some great features on there. I love it for a vocal delay or, or whatever it is. Then we've got the uh, Dual Rectifier, which I think it might be a bit too gainy. Um, the band actually had a Dual Rectifier and they did use it in the recording, but I'm just not using it in this. Um, it's very gainy, isn't it? It's very, very aggressive. And I'm not entirely sure for this track if it's going to work, but we'll see. After that, I've got Room. So this is the Brainworks reverb. To me, Brainworks aren't necessarily known. And maybe the Plugin Alliance bundle isn't completely known for like loads and loads of choice in reverbs. This is like a room, um, like a room emulation. What's the word? Convolution kind of thing. Um so I'm looking forward to kind of using this. Uh, I say it's convolution. I'm not 100% sure it is. Might be algorithmic. Don't know. Should have done my research, but I didn't. Whatever. So that's going to be my main reverbs for this. And then we've got the tape face, which is like a, a tape emulation thing. I'm used to using the like the Slate Digital virtual tape machine thing. Um, so hopefully this is going to be relatively similar. That virtual tape machine gives a great bottom end, but I want to see what this one does. After that, we've got the Distressor, so the Kive Extressor, uh, which I have used before and I know is really, really good, like seriously good. Um, after that, we've got the Lindor 69 channel, which I keep seeing a lot about. Never used it, never opened it, never done anything with it. Uh, looks cool, looks kind of scary. Um, I think we can make something work with that, though. Then after that, we've got... The Marg EQ4, use this a whole bunch, uses absolutely loads of times. It's this air gain, slap it up on the vocal uh, up at like 20k and it sounds fantastic. I'm going to be using that on the vocals for sure. Uh, Purple Audio MC77, so this is like an 1176 emulation. Not tried this, uh, it's meant to be quite cool and it's like, it's a unique one because it's a digital emulation of a hardware piece which in itself the hardware is kind of a hardware emulation of the original so it's a copy of a copy i guess um but that actual hardware unit is meant to be really good so the shadow hills mastering compressor i've used this i bought this ages ago can't get on with it never really liked it that much and it wasn't that the sound wasn't cool like it did impart some sort of tone but 
I don't know, I just wasn't that crazy on it. I didn't really find that it really compressed in the way that I'm used to it compressing, so we'll see. SPL Drum Exchanger. Now, this is going to be my triggering of choice because you're going to notice that the drums, they lack a little bit of um, anything, really. They sound pretty, pretty nasty. That snare. Yeah. A lot of nastiness there. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see how we get on. We might need to just bring in a little bit of some samples. We'll see how we get on. SPL Iron. Now, I know this hardware unit is like revered and is meant to be awesome. That's the mono version. Uh, mastering compressor. We will see how that sounds. I think it's going to sound cool. I think there's lots of options on it. Lots of different... I'm not even going to get into that now because there's so much you can do on it. But that is meant to sound really, really good. Transient Designer Plus. This is going to be especially good for toms because I know that my toms are a little bit... Mm, a little bit naff. Uh, so let's go to the last one, which is the Kirchhoff EQ. Am I saying that right? Kirchhoff, 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 don't know. Utility EQ, which is just great for loads of different reasons. Right, let's start bringing some faders up and see how it sounds. I'm going to take that off so we're starting completely from nothing. And I am just going to set my monitor level and bring some stuff up, see how we can do. Here we go. Let's go for some overheads first. Okay, bass sounds pretty DI-ish. Um, I may well start with that and just get a, a kind of a tone. Um, so let's go for, we didn't have any bass amps in there. So let's go for, oh, I don't know, the SVT. Let's see what that sounds like. So I've shortlisted a load, but some are gonna be just like amps that I think sound maybe good. Like that, which sounds very good. I think that's the free one, isn't it? The SVT, whatever. Let's try a different one, see how it sounds. Don't know what these buttons do. Just pressing it, BRT. Could be anything. That sounds good to me though. It's nice and bright. It's kind of sounds, Maybe a little too bright at the moment, but I think when everything gets in the mix, that's that's kind of going to level itself out. Um, okay, let's go on. Cool, so plenty of work to do on the drums. Let's bring some guitars in and we'll get some, uh, some amps. Now, what do I like on here? Well, we've got about a million. Let's try something. Let's try something I haven't tried before. Let's go for... Oh, I don't know. Let's go for this one. What is it? Diesel Herbert. Never tried it. I think that's going to work for the other guitar. I think that one is a little bit... Mm, it's a bit too gainy for that one because that's kind of a lead. That's cool. I think it's going to be that kind of sound as opposed to this one, which is kind of the dirtier of the two. What was that, Diesel Herbert? Let's see what that one sounds like. Let's come back a little bit. Needs a little more gain. Okay. Okay, so we've got two really kind of opposing guitar sounds there. This one is this one, the angle, what is it, E seven six five RT. That's quite a mouthful. 
quite cutting. And then this one is on the Diesel Herbert, which is... We're going to go with that for now and kind of see how we get on. Let's let's keep going. Damn, that's loud. Okay. Eyes, you're so blurry eyed. Tears last in the rain again. You suck at for the guys. Okay. That sounds kind of a little bit a little bit bright, but it's obviously very, you know, it it, it really does need clamping down a bit. So before we do too much else, let's just compress that. I'm really just trying to get to a point where well, let's make stress of this. Just trying to get to the point where everything's kind of listenable. And nothing's kind of jumping out too much and just to the point where I can then start carving some space and start making some EQ points and all that kind of stuff. Let's come down to four. Um, Straight! I ain't no classy cut. The tricks you put and the traps you've laid. I've walked in blind again. And I'm actually just going to copy that one across to the other one as well. And just get those about the same level. Let's see how that sounds. The way, hey, waster. You're my kind of man. If not for the lack of trying, I still take you to bed. The harmony. Waster, just give me your hand. And we'll work together across this torrid land. Okay, it's kind of poking out quite a lot still, but it's it's not too bad. Let's take a listen to this one. Okay, that I'm kind of tempted to say that needs loads of gain, but I don't think it does. Let let's use something we haven't used yet. What's this? Friedman DS40. No idea what you are. Nice. Oh, okay, so that one kind of takes over from that one. Let's see if we can just put that same amp over the top of them. Let's see if we can use the same one. Cool. Okay, so it's clear to me at the moment that the drums need some more punch to come through. So on our like on our main output, um, where are we? We're still pretty shy. We're still at minus twelve. So I can feel that the the guitars feel too loud, but it, I don't think it's that the guitars are too loud. I think the guitars are kind of right, and it's just that the drums aren't loud enough. So we're gonna start processing these and start to bring them in. Now everyone says don't solo stuff when you're EQing, but especially because I'm not using e uh, like plugins I'm used to. Just want to feel what it actually sounds like. Okay. I'm just going to go to something kind of familiar, um, the SSL, because I know that sounds good. I don't feel like I need to compress this too much, but compression in on kicks is kind of a, a weird thing, isn't it? Because you can lose a load of bottom end. You can, if you're trying to get like the 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 difference between the quiet hits and the loud hits to be less, then sometimes you're better off replacing with a sample because you can't always do that and it's at the detriment of some other kind of some other hits sometimes. So let's get some nice low end going. Let's 
These are really kind of standard EQ settings for me. Yeah, so before. It's really kind of knocky before, but this is bringing in some of the bottom end. I don't feel like compressing is going to be the way forward with this because these kind of hard hits here are going to be, still be really hard and they're going to be like knocking into the compression more and then in turn knocking into the EQ more. So these ones are going to end up being loads brighter than these ones, which they kind of already are, I think. You can hear when it's hitting harder, it's got more low end, more top end. So that's something we're going to have to deal with. Uh, let's try bringing in a sample and just see exactly how it sounds. No, if I want to go there, I don't know. Okay, so drum exchanger. Let's see what we can do here. Now, I have actually jumped ahead a little bit and created some samples that can go in here. I was a little bit... This is the great thing about plugin lights, okay? It does genuinely include something for every kind of possibility, even a drum trigger. And I can remember when I left university, which was like 2010, 2011, going to work in a studio. And I think Trigger, like the first one had just come out and I was saying to the guy that owned it, like, we've got to get this, we've got to get this, it's amazing. Uh, and he was saying, well, we've already got this one. Like, just try and work with that and see if it does the same thing. And I just wouldn't. I was just like, well, no, the Slate one's the best. So I'm not even going to bother. So I just did all drum trigger on my own. But this is actually pretty good, this, this SPL one. It's not got quite as many layers in it and not quite as much in terms of like the anti-machine gun and all that kind of stuff, but it's really good. So let's just go to load and then we're going to go up one and go to waste the kick. Here we go. And I've got a snare in there as well. We're not going to worry too much about that at the moment. Let's just press play and see what happens. I remember the first time I kind of got a hold of this and I couldn't really work out how to do it. I couldn't really work out like how you actually bring up the level into it. So my way of doing it is probably like the worst thing in the world, but I bring the attack up like absolutely loads on the, uh, on the original and then the gain of the actual input trigger, I kind of figure like that's what it is and then bring this down. And it's not in a section that's got kick. That's really good. Professional sound. And then turn in trigger on. So there's lots of kind of buttons you have to... I don't know. I'm pretty sure I'm not doing this in the right way. But to kind of actually get to the point where it's triggering is a little bit of a workaround. But hey-ho. I'm 100% wet here, look. There we go. So we're making it not very dynamic at all. And it's a snare, it's a kick, sorry, so it doesn't really matter too much about dynamics, especially in this sort of track. Before. Yeah, that's kind of what we want. Loads of bottom end that's gonna kind of come through and then, yeah, that'll do nicely. So let's have a listen to the snare then, just on its own quickly. Okay, I don't feel like that feels too bad. Let's just bring up a little bit of uh, Transient Shaper on this. Okay, cool. Just needed a little bit more attack on there. Well, quite a lot more attack, I suppose. Uh, and then I tend to like to EQ with this. Um, I feel like we're probably going to run into some spill issues, but we'll see what happens. Bring him a track. Yeah, you see, I kind of feel like that's a bit all or nothing, really. I can try and bring up some of the uh, 
nice sort of low mids. Again, I think it's too inconsistent. Like, listen to this bit where you've got the snare there. So you've got a really loud snare there with two smaller snares behind it. Just think it's kind of turned into a bit of a blob. Let's get that transient shaper off. Transient designer, sorry. It's kind of better without, actually. I think I'm just going to go for a trigger again on that. I don't think this is no wrong one. I don't think this is necessarily going to be like 100% wet on the trigger, but it's definitely going to have elements of a trigger in there. So let's load one up. Uh, waste a snare. Here we go. Uh, let's see if I can remember how I should do this again. Jeez, that's loud. Okay. Amazing what a trigger can do. These samples, just as a bit of a plug, these are my own samples. Uh, you can check them out. Link in the description. This is just like a brass snare, I think, um, in Rock Snare Pack 1. And then the kick is in the Big Fat Kick sample pack. So you can check them out. Dirt cheap. Just go buy them, please. They're great. The curve of his face. Yes, so Okay, we're kind of getting somewhere now. Let's bring up some of these uh, overheads and just see what's going on. Feels pretty roomy. Let's take a listen to the drums all together, just on that bus. Yeah, I don't feel like the symbols are bright enough. You'll see I've got a crash track down here, which is just crash samples because I wasn't really getting enough out of those overhead tracks. That was in the original mix, like all those years ago. That's fine. That's not got enough. So let's look at creating a bit more top end there. Let's go to the Lindell, because I've heard such cool things about this. It's meant to be, you know, the dogs, but we'll see. Uh, let's just set a loop around that and just bring up some top end. Is there actually like a bypass? Guess it's just gotta be. Okay, that sounds good. There's a little bit of uh, resonance in there though. That's pretty cool that we can add like 10 dB at 14K and it just sounds a little bit brighter. Let's get a 10K, so that sounds like. That sounds decent. I'm actually just going to copy that across to the other track and see what that sounds like. Cool. Let's bring that in and see if we're getting a little bit more presence out of those overheads now. I feel like they've gone up quite a lot of level. Yeah.
Yeah. Okay. It does sound good. It sounds brighter, but let's hear what I'm going to do. I'm actually just going to take that down just a little bit and then try something else just to get that real top end. Let's let's go to like a Marg and just see. I've never used the Marg on some overheads. So I don't know what it's going to sound like. Let's find out. So let's go up to like 20K and just bring some of it in. Yeah, that sounds good. I think that's giving a little bit more top end in a slightly different way than the Lindell was. Crispy. That's definitely giving it a little bit more kind of air, but I want to do some overall drum bus compression. The reason for that, it just sounds a little disjointed at the moment. I think if I do that, then I'm going to bring up some of the kind of cymbal tails and Distressor is great for this. Is there anything else we can kind of use there? I want to try and use a bit of everything, really. Let's see. All right, I'll tell you what. Let's go crazy. Let's use the SPL iron uh, and then put that kind of before the uh, the extressor and just see what's going on. So I'm going to take the extressor out for a moment and bring this iron in and just see what's going on. So I've seen this before, never used it ever before in my life. Let's see what we've got here. Have we got any kind of drum stuff? Uh, there's probably some stuff there. I just can't see it. Drums bus. There we go. Right. Hold on tight. I'm going to turn it off first. Don't Not doing very much. It's kind of tucking in a little bit. definitely tucking it in i think that one's kind of controlling overall levels but this is going to be the kind of vibey one yeah just straight away it's just yeah it sounds cool but it's kind of destroyed the low end so let's bring those high passes in without it Still destroying the bottom end. Okay. Wow. Okay, that is absolutely killing the top, the, the bottom end, isn't it? I think that's just too much. No, it's not working for me. Damn it. Oh, I would say how good that compressor is, but for some reason, it's just not kind of doing what I thought it was going to do. Let's try and find a different compressor that is going to have a similar kind of effect. God, there's so many. There's just so much to choose from. Damn. Um, okay, let's think about this logically. What do we know or who do we know makes good compressors? Oh, so many people. Um, what about some of the, uh, I can picture it, but I can't say, yeah, Alicia, Empressa. I think that's Compressor. Must be. Name like Empressa. Yeah. Let's see how this sounds. Let's just slam a preset on to start off with and see how we get on from there. That sounds good.
I like that. That sounds really nice. I've never used that compressor in my life, but now I'm going to, so it sounds wicked. We're getting a little bit of like on the, uh, the overheads, aren't we? Yes, we are. Right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take those two overhead tracks, shove them out to a different bus first. Bring that over here. And then that one's going to go to the drums. And we're just going to put the kerchief, am I saying that right? Kerchief on there. And we're just going to get it to do some nice stuff. So we're going to get it to kind of dynamically just bring down that area. So let's listen to it. It's there, isn't it? Guess that pretty well. Uh, dynamic. Let's see. So we don't actually want to EQ down. We just want to make it so it can come down if it needs to. Is this one? I think we're the wrong one. <laughs> I was on the wrong one. I was on below. I should have been on above. Yeah, I think that's just notching it out. Just, just making it so it's a little bit smoother. Before. Yeah, I still need to punch through, but I think that's kind of, that's working quite nicely. Um, let's go to a drum verb because, yeah, I'm a little bit, I don't know, I'm not, I don't want to say I'm hesitant about this, this here, but let's go for a, a platey kind of thing. Um, let's just bring some snare into it, which is clipping. Brilliant. Let's just go into the drum verb and just see how it sounds. Yeah, see, that was what I was kind of worried about. Well, for a start, we need to take down that pre delay. Oh, wow. Pre delay was at 10. That sounded like it was loads. Okay, I think the room size is just too, too massive. Hang on a minute. I'm not convinced that's working. I don't think that's really, really what I was aiming for. I'll tell you what I'm going to go for. I'm going to call this drum room instead, and I'm going to send uh, everything to it. So I'm going to go drum room. Yep, yeah, we're going to bring that back down, all the way down. And then we're going to make those, going to make those post fader. So they essentially have the same mix as this. So as I bring those up, Oh, that's all gone wrong, isn't it? Uh, where am I? So bring those all up to like Unity. It's just going to retain the mix that is on those faders. That sounds horrible. Brilliant. Okay, so let's go for Room. A little bright. Okay, let's bring that in the mix and see if it was, see if that's what it was missing. Start with it off. And 
Yeah, I feel like that's helping. I feel like it's kind of bringing everything together just a little bit. Um, let's go from the top and just see see what's going on. I know I'm going to need to work on these toms, but overall, let's just kind of see see where it's sitting. And have a bit of coffee. <laughs> Okay, I'm still, I'm hearing issues with these overheads still. I don't feel like the Lindell is really, it's really kind of doing what I was anticipating. Yeah, see it's still kind of pumping out a little bit. I think that might be partly due to this. Um, I may just be coming down a little bit too hard on it. Yeah, that feels a little bit better. Um, I think the, the vocals obviously need some work. Let's go to these vocals and just bring in, let's go on to like uh, the reverb, the vocal reverb, and then just take it from there basically. Let's bring in, let's go on all the vocals, take them all to the vox verb and all to the vox delay, and then kind of take it from there. So vox reverb, we're gonna have to go with um, that one again, unless there is another one, isn't there? Well, there's, there are like a few, I feel like I'm doing them a disservice. There are a few uh, few reverbs that, that are cool, like Tails, the unfiltered audio one. This is kind of a cool, uh, cool reverb. Not 100% sure it's going to work in this kind of scenario. No presets there. Brilliant. Just what I wanted. Um, let's preset. Fetch presets. I just want something to start off with. I don't want it to be like the thing that I use. I just want a little bit. Well, let's go for that and then we can just make it a bit smaller. The tricks you put in the traps you've laid I've walked in blind again The way Oh, that needs to be on 100% The curve of his face I'm so committed I can't show you away Okay, I don't like I don't, I don't hate that Classy cut the That's kind of cool Let's go to the delay, uh, delay 2500, because this has got a few cool features. Um, it says we're at 120, but I don't think we are. I don't think this was done. I didn't use clicks in those days. What are you talking about? Let's see how this sounds. The tricks you put in the traps you've laid, I've walked in blind again. The way, the curve of his face. Just tapping it. I'm so committed, I can't show you away. Okay. Let's double that, so like 600. Classy cut. The tricks you put in the traps you've laid. I've walked in blind again. The way, the curve of his face. Cool. That snare's getting in the way, though, isn't it? I 
don't know if it's actually too loud. Reverb and delay sounds really nice. Let's use the purple audio. Let's just try and slam it a little bit, see what happens. Whoa. <laughs> Instantly better on the snare. We like that. Uh, and it's going to the room quite nicely as well. Cool. I just want to address these guitars, actually, because it kind of feels like they're not quite bright enough, but some weird kind of EQ stuff going on. So this is the AMEC uh, 250, which is well smart. I like this a lot. Um, where am I? 12. Let's bring something up. Okay, so I'm just giving it like some top and some mid, like a lot of top. But one thing I've noticed about this EQ in particular is you can give it loads of top. You can give it loads of anything really. And it just kind of sounds really natural still. It doesn't really, it doesn't push back at you. It doesn't like sound nasty. It just sounds like a good version of whatever you put into it. Uh, I'm going to send this one to guitars as well. And let's try and give it some body as well. Just listen to guitars on their own. not a massive fan of that uh, it, well no i am a fan of it but i don't think i'm a fan of it for this one i think it just sounds a bit sounds a bit oh i don't know it's not quite enough it's not quite got enough grit let's see i don't think this is gonna have a grit i don't know maybe it will that is not the right amp for this um chandler i know is quite gain light i don't really want to go for the vh4 because i don't know it's an awesome amp, but it's just, there's so much, so much there. And I kind of said that was the one that needed to be a bit cleaner. But, it does sound good. And if it sounds good, it sounds good.
know I said no edits, but can you hear that aeroplane? Well annoying. All right, I think I'm going to have to deal with these toms because they just sound a bit naff at the moment. See if we can get one of these transient designers on. I what I've found with with like transient designers is that they're great. Um, let's go for the console N. So let's go for the Neve on this. Never used this. No idea how it functions. Let's find out. Yeah, the thing I've found with transient designers is they're great, but they can kind of lose some life that you could have just replaced with EQ. Like you could have just EQ'd it in the first place. So let's see. Now this is terrifying. I've used Neves before that didn't look like this. I've used the 88R, 88VR, is it? Don't know. The big massive one 88 rs don't know can't remember should have researched it and they didn't look like this they were much better um so we've got okay we've got high and low cuts this is eq this is top end okay with your mid range and low end okay got you let's try and add a bit of bottom end then let's turn this presumably turning that off makes it into a bell Nice. Uh, I'm going to actually put the transient shaper after that because I want it to shape after it's done the EQ. That's a really annoying noise. Sorry about that, guys. Let's go to not that one. Let's take this one, get some of those low mids and just get them gone. Yeah, loads of bottom end, let's go. <laughs> Not that much. I'm guessing by this, there's like an expander taking place, but I've not got it turned on, so I don't know. Okay, the gate's on. But because stuff's being like faded out so quickly, it's not actually having any effect at all. Uh, let's just move that one, move those across to the floor, Tom, as well. Now we have to change the frequencies, obviously. Because uh, it's going to need to be more in the kind of low end area, but let's just see. Yeah, it needs some top somewhere else. Wow, that distorts really easily. That's interesting. Uh, let's have a listen to these. Hear the sound. Nice. They sounded pretty garbage before, but they sound cool now. They sound kind of splatty, but that's sort of the nature of it. Like they, I remember them being like really loosely tuned toms, and without sampling them, this is the kind of the best we're going to get out of them. But I think they sound quite cool. They kind of matched the the aesthetic of the whole track. Bring it down a little bit. Uh, so there's not a whole lot we haven't taken a look at other than like master bus stuff. Um, what I do want to do is just bring this over to this side. Okay, so master bus. Well, <laughs> there's a few things that I said I wanted to use here. I want to take a look at um, the black box doofer the thingy the uh the kive audio uh tape face as well i want to look at that first i'm gonna put the eq on it as well like the amex i think that's really cool but let's just take a listen to what this is doing um yeah let's see Okay, saturation, let's bring that up. Okay, 
Nice. That's kind of doing what I expected uh, in terms of like low end. Let's see if we can widen that out a little bit. Right again, sucker for new guys. Wow, okay, that stereo width control is really taking effect on the delays and the reverbs more than anything. I like that a lot. That that does work extremely well. All right, I'm impressed. Yep, we'll have that one. Stick that one in the arsenal. Let's take a look at Black Box. Uh, in fact, I'm going to turn that kive off because I feel like I want to hear kind of just this. That's destroying stuff. It's not doing a lot, is it? Really? Oh, that'll be it. Yeah, all right. Sorry about that. Hadn't pressed the old uh, make it work button. Oh, is that just saturation? Yeah, because everything else was making a difference, wasn't it? Very much so. Okay, so saturation, that's what we need. Yeah, it's crunchy. I don't know. Do I like it? Not entirely convinced I do. I think I like the tape better, actually. Yeah, in terms of like a one box that just makes everything sound cool, I think that that tape one's better. Let's get rid of you. Let's uh, let's go to some EQ. Does it need EQ? I don't know. Let's have a listen. Um, let's play another part of the track because I think you're probably sick of that one now. give it a little bit of a bottom boost i've given it a small top boost it's not like killing anything it's just giving it a little bit of oomph let's do the same in the bottom that's what i love about this eq i'm giving it like less than so one and a half db at the bottom and just one db at the top and it's making like i said before that it's an EQ that you can give it loads and it not like sound nasty, but it just makes everything sound really good. Everything's just sounding a little bit more alive with it. And I say a little bit, I do mean like a little bit. It's not like the biggest difference in the world, but it's definitely a difference. Um, is there anything in here that I haven't used? Oh, Master Desk, I love that thing. Um, I'm not going to go for that now. Not not right now. I didn't actually mention that in the first place, did I? I missed that one out. But that is a great sounding like mastering thing. But yeah, I don't know. I feel like I've kind of covered it. Let's have a look at this because I don't know. I, I want to like it. I want to find it irresistible. But I just don't quite understand it, I think. Um, let's go for mastering. Mastering medium. Let's see what that's doing.
so that is kind of bringing everything in a little bit and adding some overall glue. All right, so mastering medium preset works and bringing the threshold from the optical circuit up just a little bit. I was trying to find a an attack for the uh, optical, but I can't quite see one. I think that's probably part of the design. I think it's just kind of it is what it is. Um, let's try these different transformer types, though. I think that's what they are. That's just kind of working, actually. It's not, it's not anything too crazy, but it is doing something really good. Let's take a listen before any of this master bus processing, and then after. Yeah, I like it. That's good. All right. I think it's kind of it's kind of there. Like I'm not doing a full proper mix. Let's get everything automated and make everything sound amazing. This is just an overall kind of thing. I've not done any drum parallel stuff because I think that the drums kind of sound pretty punchy as they are. What have we learned? The Kive tape is awesome. The Amec EQ250 is awesome. The Shadow Hills I've recently found is awesome. The Black Box I'm not too bothered about, but okay, whatever. The Marg EQ we know is awesome. SSL EQ, uh, sorry, this is the Neve. The Neve, I would say this Neve is kind of a bit more, Neves are like punchy and aggressive. And I think that's what we found like by cranking a load in the bottom end, it made it distort loads. And if you were to do the same thing on like an SSL, it wouldn't distort quite as easily or as much. So Neves are aggressive, SSLs are a little sweeter, but we know the SSL sounds cool. The Neve is good, it's kind of utility. I didn't use it a massive amount, but it did what it needed to do. The SBL Drum Exchanger is good. It's maybe not quite as, um, it's suited for when you need to just support something. When you're not trying to make it sound super natural, super natural, when you're not trying to make it sound very, very natural, then it's cool and you just need to add that that lower layer underneath um, and just bring in a little bit of a dry signal so that works well i've not done a massive amount of bus processing here um what i have found is that unfiltered audio the tails that's really cool that's kind of dreamy and the delay i know i like that that's that's an awesome sounding delay and the ducking just bringing down the delay effect when the vocal sounds that works for me every single time and i'm never going to stop doing that hope it's been fun for you plug in alliance Everyone knows they make amazing plugins. Everyone knows that the big pack is awesome, but I never really gave it much of a chance because I'd never used it that much before. But I can see that a lot of these are definitely going to make their way into my workflow. A lot of them just did a great job. Some of the amps, those DI signals that I had were kind of tricky. They weren't the, gre the greatest kind of DI recordings in the world, but the amps seemed to take them on board and just do things relatively easily so they sound nice what more is there to say the plugin alliance bundle it gets a big thumbs up from me and for mixing a track using a load of plugins that i've never really tried before they were incredibly easy to use they were intuitive and can't say enough good things about them hope it's been fun for you leave us a comment let us know what you think do you use plugin alliance do you use someone else i don't know let's have a chat about it i'll see you again soon take care